with the introduction of lists, I want to actually go back to our looping control structures. Specifically, the reason why is because I want to introduce something known as the for loop. So before, we were only thinking about while loops, and they had some conditional attached to them. Well, now that we're dealing with a list, if we think about it for just a moment, I can create some number that would allow me to traverse that list. So I could, for example, make an i equals zero uh, while i is less than seven. And then, uh, I don't know, print days, I'll just shorthand it to days at i, i plus equal one. And congratulations, I now can traverse through my list. But the issue is that, oh, well, I need one, two, three lines of code just to traverse through my list or go through every element in my list. And so the for loop kind of shorthands that. Instead of having three lines uh, necessary, uh, it can condense it down into one. Ah, look at that, nice. And to use it, again, just like every other you know, control structure, we specify the, the magic keyword to start uh, for, and then we give it some variable or temp variable name that's only going to exist while we're in the loop. Then we're using another magical keyword called in. And then specifically, we give it our list. Now, there are two separate ways that this could operate. So you can see I show two different versions here. This top version is just going to grab the element uh, in the list, and that's it. This second version, so let's see, uh, grabs, garbs, grabs element from list, grabs index from list. And again, the big thing here is you may want the index, you may want the uh, element. And one of the things I typically do, I will say that I do favor this version, uh, mostly because I can always access the element in the list uh, in this way. So I can still get the element, but now I still have the index attached to it. And just to see this in action. So <clears throat> the way to think about this is here are the uh, four different ways that we could, or three different ways we could traverse this list. The first one is through the while loop. Again, I would have to start with some index and then go through while that is less than the length of my array or list. And we can generate and calculate out that through len, uh, just like with a string. So len days. Uh, and then uh, for our sake, I'll just say print days at i. <clears throat> i plus equals 1. So again, what this is going to do, print the days of the week. Nothing I, you know, I've shown you. Uh, what this will do magic. Uh, but the big thing is, again, that was just using the while loop. I could also use the for loop. Uh, I'll call this for loop one. And the entire idea here is instead for day in days. Print day. Now what this is going to do is effectively traverse through the list, go through the list, and make the element at each index equal to day. So again, day would be Sunday, then Monday, then Tuesday. And I just want to print them. 
the last version is for loop number two. And it's my most popular version. It's how I typically uh, like to work. For i in range len days. Print days at i. Now, what's going on here, just so we can sort of uh, expand out on what we're seeing. First off, len days. Len days is going to tell me seven. So nothing outlandishly crazy there. But what is len or range len days? Well, Python is going to just, it's going to provide me with some object. But what this object means is it's a range of numbers from zero to seven, not including seven. And we can actually see this in action. If I use this, but instead of printing days at i, just print i. Oh, all right, well, you can see it's printing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going through and it's made its own little list of numbers, 0 to uh, 7, and I can use this. So days at i. And so I can now see each way. So again, there are the big point I'm getting at here is there are multiple ways you can traverse through your list. The way you pick is up to you. I personally, when I'm dealing with it, use this version because again, I like to have access to my I, my index and the value. Uh, so I can have both the element and the index at the same time. But that doesn't mean that I don't do this as well. There are times where I don't care about the index. I don't need to do things with it. Uh, so I just, skip over that part entirely and just do printing of every element in the list. Uh, and then you've got the while loop. It does the exact same thing. The only difference is I don't have to use three, very, uh, three lines of code to make my print statement happen. So each one works.